Okay, so now we're at the place in our web mockup where we want to start the layout and building the wireframe. And that terminology of wireframe in web design is basically uh, sort of creating sectional layouts of how the, the, lay, the layout design is going to be. Um, and before we start that, we have to have some understanding of the dimensions. So I want to show you a couple of things first before we start building our file. Let's revisit our sketch that we had. Okay, so, so far what we've done is we've created this, uh, this logo badge right here uh, that we can just add in as a smart object, but we haven't created any of this other uh, framework yet. Okay, so we've got, you know, all of these division sections, okay. And, you know, and if, if you were going to create this as just sort of a flat color blocked website, then this actually would probably be more than just a wireframe. It would actually be more like the design of the site. But we have intentions of putting images in some of these areas. So really, this isn't the final design. It is sort of more like a framework, OK? Um, now, to do this, let's talk about some issues of responsive design first so that we at least understand kind of what we're getting ourselves into. Well, if you look at this, you'll probably notice that this is very much grid-based. And so much of design work, graphic design, web design, and even you know design of art projects, you know, if for fine art and so forth, those things are all generally, often, I shouldn't say all, but often based on a grid. And, you know, things in nature have grid-based proportions. And, you know, if you've ever studied anything about the golden ratio, the golden rule, um, then, uh, or the principle of thirds, then you understand that there are certain mathematical um, relationships in design that actually are more pleasing to the eye than others. So one of the things that works really well within the web framework is uh, grid-based design. Not only is it more visually and aesthetically appealing, but it also makes it a lot easier for um, us to figure out how to manage a set of rules where you know you hit certain screen dimensions and then the you know, the uh, layout would break, and uh, so you would want it to have literally what are called breakpoints, where whenever the website hits a breakpoint, then it reflows into a different design style. And let me show you kind of what I'm talking about. Here's a good example of a, a really good website. This is um, something that a lot of web designers use for reference, CSS tricks. But one of the things that I'm showing you this for is because I want to show you kind of what happens when I scale You'll notice, first of all, I want you to notice that first you'll see that right here where it says grow your CSS skills up in this top little um, call out, as soon as I hit a certain dimension, it disappears because we're starting to run out of space. And the, the designer of the site made a decision that that was not as important as, you know, the treehouse part. And, and then you'll see as we continue to go then it jumps and you'll notice that the gutters here on the sides they change in dimension too and so now instead of having a wider gutter on the sides we actually have smaller ones okay um, so that's something that's changing in the design and then once you get to a certain point you're going to notice something very clear all right uh, we our search bar changed okay and then if you look search bar went from being part of the navigation bar to dropping down to the next line so that the navigation has more space. And if we keep on going, you're going to notice, boom, that these items right here, these categories that are sort of rainbow colored, they were floating here on the side. Well, now they have been pushed up here because the idea is that maybe this is on a tablet or something like that and you don't have as much real estate and so what he's done this designer has done is he's made some decisions about the order of importance of the content that's on the page and so he's rearranging it based on screen dimensions so that you know the important stuff is available where it needs to be and then if you keep on going you'll see that where it said treehouse before, it just goes straight to the logo. And then also this other thing happens with the navigation up here. It's a little bit different. And so you can just keep on fooling around with it. But anyway, that is responsive design. It is literally responding to the size of the screen. 
uh, well, I shouldn't say just the size of the screen, but also the size of the website's window. The, the, it's called the viewport, okay? So, um, and then here's another like simple example. And this is based on a grid system. And you can see how this content changes. The sidebar, um, where it did take up a certain percentage, it suddenly gets demoted to bumping itself down to the bottom. It takes up 100%. But the idea, again, is that you know, you're on a smaller screen, so you, you can't fit these two things side by side, because suddenly you can't read all the content maybe that's in them, because it's too small or something like that. So this is the, the kind of basic, fundamental nature of responsive design. Is literally it will respond to the window dimension of the browser. And if you're on something like a phone or a tablet, you don't get to resize your browser window. It just is the size of the, of the tablet or the phone. So it then corresponds with uh, the screen dimension. Now, there are a lot of different ways to build these grid systems. Um, and you'll see you know, dozens and dozens of them out there. I'm not going to show you all of those because this isn't a web design class, but it's still important that you understand this concept so that when you're designing, you have some informed decisions that you can make. So what I want to do is I want to show you a grid system. I'm just going to show you one. I'm not going to show you all of them. There's so many of them out there, but this will give you some understanding of what it is that we're looking at and what we want to do. Most grid systems are divided into approximately 12 different little columns. And when I say columns, by no means do I really mean that this is really intended to be a column that has content in it. Um, you know, one of these single columns would be generally way too small. But what, it, what they provide are sort of like units of measure so that you have a grid that you can base your other content containers off of. So if you have 12 columns, you're also going to have little gutters in between. Okay. And this way you can see kind of the way that this is overlaid. Like if you say, all right, well, the header is going to go 100%. Well, it's going to go 100% except for the outlying margins over here. And then the main content maybe is going to span eight columns and then the sidebar spans four and so forth. And then you can see some different arrangements that are possible. Um, and almost every grid that is a modern grid is going to have this kind of, you know, some similar kind of setup. All right. And uh, different ones are based on on different principles. And I'm not really going to go into all of that, um, you know, whether about percentages or pixels or whatever. This isn't a web class, as I've said before. Um, but it is important that you kind of understand because you are, you know, potentially going to have to deliver this kind of stuff to other people if you ever, you know, get a job doing design work or even if you want to do your own kind of web website and you, you know, maybe you want some help developing the actual web part of it if you don't end up learning web design, then you can easily hand it off to somebody who does it, you know, and then you have your own portfolio or something. So anyway, um, let's look at <clears throat> some different ways that you can think about this and without actually going too much into this particular grid. By today's standards, um, you know, we have to look at all of these varying different uh, screen dimensions. And, you know, you've got phones, which are really small. You've got tablets, which are bigger. And you've got those sort of in-between weirdo things, phablets or whatever you want to call them. We have laptops. And, you know, sometimes laptops, the screens are really no bigger than a tablet. Or the laptop and the tablet are one and the same. Just one has a keyboard and the other doesn't. You know, and then you go up to different desktop sizes and to the giant desktop, which is, you know, like a 27-inch monitor or something like that. So really, there's no telling what size screen you're going to have and what the resolution is going to be. So a lot of people will do maybe um, something that's based in percentages so that you can you can do something like this, you know, and then <clears throat> maybe they'll have a maximum size once you hit a certain point. You know, if I keep on going wider, well, this one doesn't do that, but I was going to say, maybe you have a certain maximum dimension where it stops scaling up um, and, and then it just centers itself so it doesn't get too big. Well, I, as I said, I'm not going to go into all of that. I'm just going to kind of give you a pretty decent foundation to start with. One of the things that we can look at on my computer is 
my resolution, for instance, this is a 13 inch um, on Apple computer. Um, this is not an advertisement, by the way, for Apple. Um, but it's a it's a 1280 width dimension. And whether or not you know the screen of some other computer is 1280, it's not necessarily going to be the same thing. It might be 1150, it might be 1200, it might be whatever. But it's going to be in that general vicinity. So at some point, you just have to kind of pick a number, you know, that makes sense. And so this is where I personally say, okay, well, 1280 starts to look like a desktop because it's a standard uh, dimension that is larger than a tablet, um, but it is still smaller than a traditional desktop um, where you've got a really large screen, but it kind of behaves like a desktop in a lot of ways when you have a laptop of at least maybe 13 uh, inches for the display. So 1280 is kind of where I'm going to use my basic foundation um, when I'm building my mock-up because, you know, realistically with Photoshop, we're not dealing in percentages, we're dealing in pixels. You know, maybe a web developer can make things scale in pixels and all that stuff, but we can't do that whenever we're building flat mocks up, flat mockups in Photoshop for output. So I'm going to just pick a number, and 1280 is a pretty good standard one. And what you might and, and this is where we're kind of going to deviate from a normal process is that we're going to focus right now just on the one mock-up. But in an ideal world, if you were making several mock-ups, you would probably make three to four mock-ups where you've got sort of the super big screen that you're dealing with, like maybe a 27-inch monitor, and you would figure out the dimension of something like that. It's probably somewhere in the 2,500 pixel range, which is you know basically twice the size of this 1280 number. Um, you might have one that's, you know, deals with what is it going to look like on a screen that big? And then you would have maybe this one. And then maybe the next one down is going to be something like, I don't know, like a 700 or 800 screen dimension that might be appropriate for a tablet. And then you would have something a lot smaller, you know, that would be like a smaller phone, you know, maybe like a, a 320 dimension or something like that for an old iPhone. Anyway. But right now, as I said, we're going to focus on this one because it's sort of middle of the road. And a lot of people have laptops and so forth, okay? So we're going to base our grid on 1,280 pixels. And one of the things that I want you to think about when you look at websites is, uh, you know, maybe on a phone, let's look at this exa example again. Maybe on a phone, let's say that this is your phone, you have really narrow margins here or no margin, but you have very narrow margins here on the sides. But as I expand, now I start to get slightly wider margins and you start to see the black showing here. And I keep getting bigger margins. So on something that is about the size of this laptop dimension, you're going to have margins that center. I cannot seem to grab my, there you go, grab the edge. Okay, so you're going to have these margins on the outlying perimeters that help you typically center your content. Um, and so we're going to base it off of that. So we're going to do a little math here, okay? Really base. So I've got my calculator. So if we're going to start with 1280 pixels, all right, let's say that, let's say that we like the idea of making our content, like in here, somewhere in the ballpark of 85% of the screen. All right. Even though we aren't dealing in percentages, a web developer will be. So if I multiply that times 0.85, I get somewhere around a oh, 1,000 pixels. Well, I think what is safer for me to do is to round down. And I say, OK, well, let's use 1,000 pixels as the breakpoint for this content. OK, well, 1280 minus 1,000. And this is the way you got it. Oops, minus 1,000, not 100. That equals 280 pixels, right? Well, if we're talking about what to do to divide up these margins on the left and the right, well, this is the left and this is the right, then that means we would have to divide this remainder of 280 in half. So we divide that by 2. We end up with 140 pixels. So that means that we can expect in a 1280 layout to have 140 pixel margins on each side. And that's a good place for us to start, okay?